Hey y'all, it is a toasty one today. The heat index is 110, somewhere there about. Might be even higher than that. Mm, man, I'm sweating all over. Uh, so we're gonna try to keep this in the shade and move things along as quick as possible. Um, for the first time, you're gonna see me wearing shorts. Uh, we're running on an aluminum boat here. It's got a crack in the front. We're gonna get that welded up and I'm not worried about a whole lot of sparks today. So shorts it is. And normally I'd wear some uh, Crocs for better foot protection, but my Crocs decided to turn on me and chew the skin off the knuckles on my toes. So, I'm in flip-flops. Now we're gonna get this pulled around back. It is a whole lot easier for me to pull what's in the front yard to the back, one object versus load everything up in the back and drive it to the front yard. I can't even stop sweating right now to talk in the camera. It is so hot out here, good Lord. Anyway, I got the four-wheeler hooked up. This is how I move stuff from the front and the backyard. Um, sometimes you'll see me use the lawnmower. Uh, it's not really good for a heavy-weighted load because it's not a true axle underneath the lawnmower. However, the four-wheeler has a solid rear end, so I feel more comfortable putting a heavier load on it. If I don't, then I'll use the burgundy pickup truck to move something if I have to, but most times the four-wheeler is a little more maneuverable to fit into these gaps and move around the driveway and whatnot. But anyway, today we're going to the backyard to get the TIG machine and weld up the crack on the front of this boat here. I'll get you a closer up look at this crack once we get into the backyard. I got to get you guys out of the sun because my camera, my camera is liable to overheat at any minute. So let's get this to the backyard and I'll see you back there. All right, so it's blazing hot, and hopefully I'm talking loud enough to so that you can hear me over the fan I got going. I gotta have it. It is killing me out here. It is so hot, even my flip-flops are starting to bake in the sun and getting too hot for my feet. So, right now I've gotta pull the trolling motor off. From what I can tell, it's four Phillips head screws. Pull this thing off. That's gonna give us more room to get to the nose right here where the actual, wet, where the actual crack is. And I'll get you in for a close-up once, once I get this off and I can get you in here to really look at what we want to do. There's a crack here. We're going to drill both ends of the crack, which is normal for any crack. Then we're going to come through, clean it up with a wire wheel and some sandpaper probably to get it cleaned up and then we'll go and weld it out. Um, but <laughs> again, it's toasty hot, so we're going to do less talking and more working and get this trolling motor taken off. All right, guys, I run into my first issue. The Phillips head screws are free spinning. I can't get to the underside to figure out what's going on because of the way the boat is set up. So I went inside, I had a nice talk with the customer. I explained to them that, you know, there's a whole bunch of solutions I could do to get this off, get this trolling motor out of the way, but they could lead down a rabbit hole and I'm just not willing to put in the time in this 110 degree weather to go those routes. It can take a wrong turn any minute and turn ugly and I'm out here all day baking and it's just not safe, it's not healthy at all. Um, he explained to me he has some fishing tournaments lined up for next week or so and he's concerned about the crack going further down the hole and I explained to him that I could weld from the bottom of the crack up and go as high as I could reach safely without messing up his trolling motor or anything else. And he said that would give him a whole bunch of reassurance when he's on the water that, is, that the crack is not gonna go further down the hole. Um, and he'll have that peace of mind while he's fishing. And he knows that anytime he can bring it back further down the road when it cools off and we can get the top if we can't get it today. Uh, if you check out on Instagram, that guy's one channel on Instagram. You'll see I did a uh, post on this a, a little while ago, a few minutes ago actually, when I was inside talking to the customer about avoiding rabbit holes and setting limits. Go check that out again, Instagram, that guy's one channel on Instagram. I do a lot of more up-to-date stuff on that. It takes longer for me to do the videos for them to come out so they come out further down the road. 
but we we're both in agreement that we're just going to go ahead and clean it up drill it and weld out what we can of it and he's happy with that and we're moving on and we're not spending hours out here on end trying to fix something that's not really pro that's not really part of the problem so first thing we'll get the grinder we'll clean this up real good second we'll get the drill we'll try to drill both ends of the crack i don't know how the uh troller motor is going to affect the angle of the top where i'm going to drill the top of the crack and then once this drill we'll come back with the tig welder and weld it out so I'm going to get the grinder and move on with this. So, just as I expected, my camera overheated while I was welding. Um, I know, excuses, excuses, right? So, as you can see here, at the top, I drilled the hole. Um, I welded down. It's not, it's not pretty, guys. There's paint on it. Um, the, the stuff that the metal has absorbed from the water, being out on the water, um, and it's some thin stuff, too. It's probably a 16th of an inch. Um, so, down here, I don't know if you can see it in the video earlier when I was hammering the metal back together to, to get the gap closed in, get the metal closer together. Um, there was actually a large chunk that fell out right here, so I'm having to kind, kind of bubble gum it in and then go back and melt it down to get the sides to fuse in with the base metal like it's supposed to. Um, like I said, I caught it just in time to lead this last little bit here and this is actually going to be the hardest part that I'm putting on camera. This is actually going to be the hardest part and I'm going to record it for you put it on camera so you can watch me mess up. Um, but on this downward angle here, I've been working down because the metal up here was a whole, there wasn't a whole lot of a gap up here. It was easier to get the weld built up and drag the weld downward. Um, on this one, I'm not entirely sure which direction I'm going to go once I arc up and see where the arc forms the best and will hold the metal the best that's going to be direction i go i got a feeling because of the angle it's going to be upward um but that's just the way it goes camera overheated and i left you the best part for last anyway so you get to watch me weld this out So one of the issues I run into welding outside the shop is from time to time I forget to take my sunglasses off and put safety glasses on. Not worried about stuff getting in my eyes through the sunglasses versus safety glasses, just the fact that they're tinted and being able to see. Uh, you got sunglasses on, which are like a shade two, shade three, when you add in a shade 10, it's really dark. 
<laughs> um, not necessarily having a hard time with this because of what I can and can't see. Um, but it certainly wouldn't help to get these things swapped out to my regular safety glasses. So, we dabbed in a little bit of aluminum on the tungsten here. I had to go clean the tungsten up real quick, but now we're back at it. Clean tungsten, and we're going to see if we can't weld this last bottom piece out, which obviously is where the most concern is. So, let's get to it. Alright, so the bottom side of this hole is proving to be a little difficult to get to. Dig a little bit. Alright, so you now be, might be thinking, you know, you took the grinder to it, you're removing metal. The whole purpose of this is to put metal there and you kind of removed metal. What was happening was I was getting too much metal coming down and it was building a cliff and I couldn't get to the underside because of this uh, post here. So I need to get in at a straight angle and I couldn't because of the cliff that I was forming from the metal. So I went back and smoothed it out. And not only does that allow me to get to the angle I want to get, but instead of trying to fill in the bottom of volcano, now I'm back to a flat circle that I've got to fill in the hole. It also provides me super clean metal because once I've ran the TIG across it, it pulls all the impurities to the top of the metal. And then when I run the grinder across it, they're now removed. So this is actually cleaner metal now that I've welded across the top of it. Let's see if we can get this hole filled in. I can see there's certain spots where I'm gonna have to go back and help fuse it into the base metal.
All right, as far as the base metal build up, I feel like I got enough metal there to reinforce whatever crack was there. Now I'm gonna take and just clean my tungsten off and go back with the, uh, whew, it's hot. But I'm just gonna go back and fuse the bead in with the base metal all the way around. I can see certain spots where it's kind of humped up and I just wanna make sure all the toes are tied in really good. So get this tip cleaned, uh, tungsten cleaned up and we'll go back and try to fuse some of this stuff in a little bit better. There's still the hole right here at the top. I'm also gonna uh, try to fill that in. I believe the trolling motor shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, I might've cleaned a little more with the, with the wire wheel. I can already tell the paint is really close to the hole and that's gonna pull right into the wheel. Um, so that's the plan for right now. Let's get the tungsten cleaned up. So one of the issues with welding outside that you run into is just the slightest bit of wind blowing really messes up TIG welding. So I was doing good, but for some reason now all of a sudden the wind decided to pick up out of nowhere. I cranked my gas up. Hopefully that'll help. Again, we're just going back and fusing stuff in. We're not trying to weld, so hopefully that gas, cranking up that gas will be enough.
All right, I'm happy with it. All right, there we go. Let's take a good look at it. Up close for you. As you can see, the holders up here, we got it filled in pretty good. It's not the prettiest looking thing. Um, it's some nasty aluminum. This ain't clean aluminum right out of the uh, store. Um, as you can see, I went around and I fused all the way down and even the underside there if you can see it i'm not sure if you can um went all the way around and fused the bead into the base metal really good to make sure we got a good seal um hopefully no water will be getting into it um this part normally is out of the water and usually what gets in through the crack is just splashed up um but got it built up really good right here to kind of reinforce it um on something this thin it's hard to well to crack back flat to the original strength you got to put some kind of you got to build it up to reinforce it but here it is it's all good um get it to wire wheel clean it up make it look a little better for the customer so he can put some paint on it when he takes it home but that's what you get and i get asked all the time people think i'm a backyard welder and i am because i'm in my backyard but they think that i'm using grandpa's stick welder or some 110 uh mig gun and not i got 220 mig uh it comes it's spool gun it is a box store brand but i can assure you it outwields some of the top of the line welders um up to a certain thickness of metal but what we weld on today is a square wave tig 200 it's a really good machine perfect for the average individual but the one killer this machine has, and nobody mentions it in any of the videos, is the fact this thing has a 15 second post flow and it will eat you out of a bottle of gas quicker than you can weld. Um, so when you talk about price differences in welding, uh, you'll notice that TIG welding is typically more expensive than MIG welding. One, the skill that's required, not everybody who welds can TIG weld. Not everybody that TIG welds tig wells on aluminum so it's a it's a certain niche 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 however you say it for aluminum tig not only that but the fact that this thing eats me out of gas i've got to pay for that that's out of my pocket out of my hourly charge so keep that in mind when you need something welded anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys enjoyed the weld and uh Hopefully you learned something today. Click that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications. Leave me a comment down below if you saw something I could have done easier. I'm always willing to learn. Maybe you learned something. Leave me a comment down below if you learned something. Hell, just leave me a comment for anything. It helps the video out. Any, any interaction with the video helps it out. All right, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all have a good one.